Hello, good to be here. How are you feeling about all the doing all the the press and hype around your your new show that premieres tonight? I'm, you know, I'm nervous about it. You know, anytime you have a new show premiering, uh, you're never sure how the audience is going to react to it. Uh, you spend five months sort of isolated working on it, and you have a, some sense of of what it is, um, and you think it's good, but you never really know until you know it's out there and and uh, to see how the audience resonates with it. You walked in and I said, "How are you, man?" And you said, uh, "I'm glad the show is over." <laughs> what, what did you mean by that? Well, working on a one-hour TV drama is uh, its a really intense schedule. I mean, you're working 12, 13, 14 hours a day, and so you really have no life. You're, you're completely, you know, your life is in lockdown for the five months that you're shooting. So, And it's hard to always understand uh, the psychological toll that that takes on you and also how deep you get into it. Right. And in this case, playing a character who has some mental issues and there's a lot of intensity to him, um, you know, when it was over, I took a big breath uh, and I realized how much kind of stress and I'd been carrying uh, for that five months. And so it's it's nice to kind of let go of it and just relax and now, you know, promote the show and, and, and hope that people like it. That's a it. great segue because that's a, a bunch of what – let's bring back that stress. Sure. Let's talk about what you went through. <laughs> uh, uh, so your character in Cracked is a detective who's been on the police force for a while and who seems to be suffering from – post-traumatic stress. So in this first episode, uh, he, he kind of loses it a couple of times. I don't, yeah. don't want to completely give it away. Uh, this is not too much of a spoiler because it's early on in the episode, but he, he at one point he, fair, he starts fairly randomly clucking like a chicken right. in a crowded uh, public place. Can you explain what leads him to that point? I'm not, I'm not sure entirely that I can. I mean, my sense of it uh, when we were shooting it is just there, there, this internal pressure that is created uh, on police officers, um, dealing with what they have to deal with day in and day out and trying to hold it all together and not have an outlet uh, for that stress, um, I think just caught up to him. And I think there was a moment with this person in a coffee shop where he, you know, he was being provoked and challenged and he could feel all of that energy coming up yeah. and probably wanted to do something not very nice to him. And it just ended up coming out in this strange uh, way, which was part of his psychotic break. Not unrelated, though, to his own stresses and uh, potential or prospective mental illness, correct? Yeah. So uh, how have you and the creators of the show... How do you walk the line on, on, on this character and this subject matter? How can a mainstream show deal with a troubling issue like mel mental illness without exploiting it um, yeah, and yet still make it something that viewers want to watch? It's a, it's a difficult line to walk. I mean, I know the writers struggled with it uh, all season long because, you know, you, you don't want to sensationalize it. You know, you don't want to use these things as a device uh, necessarily to tell stories, and yet you are making a television show. Uh, it is a format. You need to you need to tell stories, and you need to have uh, you know satisfying conclusions for the audience. So, um, you know, we tried to bring as much integrity to it uh, as we could. Um, you know, from my point of view, I, I I tried to bring as much humanity to the role as I could, uh, make him relatable, not uh, stigmatize his his illness. I'm not even sure that I would classify what he has uh, mm. from my point of view as an illness. How do you bring humanity to a role? Um, like, what do you mean when you say that? Uh, what, I, you know, what I, what I tried to do with this character, uh, is not think of him as mentally ill. I tried to just bring as much of myself and my issues and my struggles and my pain and my loneliness and my anger, uh, out. That does really sound like catharsis. It's very cathartic. Yeah. And it was playing this role then. Extremely cathartic and difficult and and painful and you you know you're you're waking up with it you're um, it's on set every day you know with people you're interacting with I mean it becomes it has its own life and uh, so I gave myself permission to just be that person and knowing that I was going to have some some bad days on set um, that all all of my stuff as a as a human being was going to come out and I think early on there was. I don't think everybody understood exactly what I was doing at first, but over time they started to see that, that 
that uh, this was a conscious choice and I wasn't, I wasn't just acting out. I was, mm. I was trying to uh, achieve something here. And, um, and I felt, I f actually felt the crew kind of start to rally around me, mm. um, and support me in that way. Um, it was very vulnerable. It was the most vulnerable thing that I've ever done as an actor. When for you sure. Say you knew you were going to have some bad days on the set. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Well, I'm playing a guy who has PTSD, and yeah. and and um, I'm playing a cop who's got an edge, and so sometimes he's going to be short tempered. Sometimes he's going to be angry. He's going to be sad. He's going to have you know and those were you moments. On set, absolutely. You know, um, and meaning you're so in the character that even after they say cut, you're still feeling that. <laughs> yeah, feeling it. I mean, trying not. To, I'm not. I'm. I'm trying not to put it on anybody, you know, or or uh, create an environment on set that's destructive. But to give myself permission to be all of my crazy mm -hmm. self, right? And, and that's, you know, to be more completely radically alive. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt that if I could do that and we could film it, that, that there would be a compelling character there. I wanted there to be a sense that this guy's on the edge, mm -hmm. he's out of control, we don't know what he's gonna say next. And the only way I can do that is if I give myself permission to be out of control on the edge and not know what I'm gonna do I next. I mean, everybody does say you're horrible to work with, so this, <laughs> this explains it, I guess. Well, that's the. Th I, well, this was actually the challenge for me because throughout my career, I've actually been really easy to, almost and, and too compliant. And mm. I felt like it affected my work. Uh, because I wasn't taking risks and I was saying yes at times when I wanted to say no and I wasn't standing up for myself and I wasn't willing to engage in the conflict that sometimes comes up in the creative process. And and in this show, I didn't shy away from that. <laughs> well, you know, that's interesting. I, I wanted to ask you about this because this role in Cracked, uh, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I've been looking at what you've been doing over the years and I've certainly seen you in, in some of the... Um, more pop stuff, let's say, the sitcoms, yeah. et cetera. Uh, this seems to be darker than than many of the roles or some of the roles you're known for. You're this handsome guy. Yeah. You've been cast as the love interest in, mm -hmm. in series like Gilmore Girls and Private Practice. Did you feel like you were getting typecast in Hollywood? Yeah, I did. It was interesting because I, you know, I grew up, like you said, I was a, I was a jock growing up and I still played men's league hockey when I was in LA. And, and my hockey, uh, you know, my hockey team, they were, they couldn't understand what I was doing on those kind of shows because they were like, you're, you, they saw me as this super intense, hardcore guy with an edge, which is sort of what I bring to sports. But for some reason, I had some block, I think, this is a personal thing, where I wasn't able to bring that to my work as an actor. Hmm. Um, I, I don't know exactly what that was about. So there was a way that, yes, Hollywood was typecasting me, but there was also a way that I was typecasting myself. Well, you... I mean, you did have a whole other kind of identity before you took up acting and went to L.A. You were this young Saskatoon guy intent on becoming an athlete. Was it hard to give up that desire to be in sports? Um, it was hard to give up the, um, the sensibility of it. The, the, you know, athletes are extremely competitive, and you have to be to, to be good at it. Um, and there's, there's a way and also you want to dominate the opposition. I mean, you've got to be part of that animal you, get, you gotta be in touch with that animal part of yourself. Isn't that what acting in LA sounds like? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm no, being I serious, think, I think you're right. yeah, no, yeah. I, th I think that actually did serve me really, really well. But there is a different uh, energy on a set. I mean, there's, there's much more of a, co a kind of collaborative energy. And, and I, I don't think that the, the pure artistic temperament and the athlete temperament, I mean, there's, there's parallels and there's connection, but I think there's, there was a bridge that I had to gap and I had, I had to discover my, my inner artist and my inner creative person that was separate from that. And then in a sense, I mean, I think what I did is I denied the, the kind of tough athlete competitive side of me for a while. I mean, it was always there. Uh, but then I, I started, I brought it back, particularly for this role. Do you think you fit in in Hollywood? I mean, uh, it, it, that sounds like a leading question because yeah. the only answer is no, then, you know, to, to sound kind of badass. But, but you know, Sean Majumder was here yesterday, yeah. right? So here's a guy who lives in LA now. Yeah. Um, with his lovely wife, yeah. he's from you know who lives there, and 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 he's from Burlington, uh, Newfoundland, this really tiny place. You're you're from Saskatoon. Um, did you did you, the transition from prairie guy to to actor in L, in L.A. Do you feel more like an outsider in L.A. or in small town Canada now? Um, that's, uh, I mean, be honest. 
I, I, sometimes I feel like an outsider and sometimes I feel like an insider. It's, it's it, you know, in LA, I, I think there was times where I felt like I was uh, on the inside. I mean, I had, a, you know, I had a parking spot on the Warner Brothers lot for four years. I mean, that's very inside. And yet there was still this part of me. I think a lot of actors talk about this. It's like, this is, this is a ruse. I'm, I'm faking them out. Like <laughs> at some point they're going to discover me. Um, and I, to be honest, coming back to Toronto, I feel more myself. I feel more grounded here, uh, particularly in Toronto. I have a lot of friends here. I went to, I went to U of T. So, uh, but it is interesting because when I was here acting in Toronto, I couldn't break in. So as a play, even being here with right, you at the classic, CBC, right. I'm, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm an outsider. I was never allowed in. <laughs> right. And now I've come back and, and now I'm kind of an insider, but I have this place where it's, it, it's a constant tension Where did you that. shoot Cracked? Here in Toronto. And what's that been, what was that like, shooting on home turf or this home turf rather than uh, doing something in, in Hollywood or in, in L.A.? It was great. I mean, shooting on the streets of Toronto was fantastic. And we shot a lot of it in the studio, but the, the stuff on the streets was, was, was great. Um, I think what I tried to do is, for the most part, is bring uh, as much of what I learned in Los Angeles um, about working on a t TV series, working as an actor, and to bring that back here to Toronto. And most of that is just a kind of intensity to the way they work. I mean, you know, for instance, a show like Gilmore Girls, which when you see it, it it's, I mean, it's certainly got uh, an edge to it to a degree, but um, it's a likable, uh, yeah. easy, accessible show to watch. But working on that show was super intense. And the, you know, the writers were intense, the actors were intense. I mean, you had to bring your A game every day. It was the big leagues and you could feel it and you better be ready. And if you weren't, if I wasn't ready for a scene, Lauren Graham was going to eat my lunch and she wasn't gonna be happy about it. Mm. And I learned quickly that, you know, this is the big leagues, you gotta step up your game. And that intensity doesn't exist here? I think it's starting to, you know, I, I think it does. Um, but uh, I think there's a way in which this is just my opinion that that can, Canadians working in the film and television industry, and I can feel the longing for it to step up the game, to make the stuff better. I think there's a lot of great stuff out there, but sometimes I feel a sense of complacency, like this is what we can do this with our money, with uh, you know, with our resources, and I don't know if that's true. And I can feel it out there. People meaning want to we're push not it. shooting high enough. I, yeah, I don't think people are shooting high enough sometimes, and just not and not as intense as what you used to. Mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to actor David Sutcliffe of Cracked. Um, the the series partly deals with mental health in the workplace, and 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 being an actor is. Well, it's not like being a cop, it, but it does seem to have its stresses. Uh, even the most successful actors don't really have control over their careers. So many decisions are up to other people. How have you dealt with the ups and downs of the business? You're not you're not an old guy, but you've been through. <laughs> I'm not a young guy. You know, you've been through a, a bunch of <laughs> yeah. highs and, and lows. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that inconsistency in your career? It is the most difficult thing to deal with, and it's it's the thing that I tell young actors is. Um, you know, you, you need to have something in your life that grounds you um, to get you through those, the, the up and down times, uh, because you cannot let uh, the work constantly define you. And if you're constantly searching for the next job, the next thing uh, to avoid uh, feeling that downtime, uh, you're, you're just going to be kind of on an endless loop. So, you know, for me, it's, it's in L.A., it was playing a lot of hockey um, with, uh, with uh, all the Canadian actors who were down there. That kind of kept me grounded. But, you know, I, I, I struggled. I mean, I had my moments where – and also I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I got down there, and I started having the success in a, in a, a certain kind of genre. And I remember being on the set of Friends and um, uh, doing a guest spot and having this very distinct feeling like that I didn't want to do that. I didn't, that, that my, my career was on that kind of trajectory and that's what my agents and managers, like that was the kind of show that what we were What part of that toward. didn't you want to do? I, I just was, I was like, I don't want to be on a sitcom, uh, you know, in this, this isn't what I signed, this isn't why I became an actor. And I, and it, I, I judged myself for this. There's some part of me that is afraid of success, is afraid of that money, is afraid of what's out there, because everybody was telling me, like, you can have that, you can do that. Well, that was the apex of, I mean, that the, was a, it, a million right? bucks an episode yeah. per, per actor, right? Absolutely. At the, at the top of their game, right? And some, so somebody says to you, here's the apex, you can have it, and then you're there, you visit that set, and you have this very 
o- powerful, overwhelming feeling like I don't want this. And that was a real struggle for me, you know, to figure out, well, then what do I want to do and where is my career going? And, uh, you know, fortunately, I have a great manager who uh, has helped navigate my career. And, and we just said no to a lot of things. And so I'm really, you know, it's, 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 it's made my career spotty in a sense. And there's times where I've had to work just to kind of maintain income and, and to keep myself going. Um, but I'm really happy with where I am now. And, and I'm excited about this show and this So why, why did you say yes to Cracked then? I mean, it's clearly not Friends. It's definitely not friends, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but, <laughs> but what was it that that w- when you when you read for it or, or thought about it, what was it that won you over? Well, I you know the first thing was I'd been in LA for fourteen years and I was starting to think that I wanted to come back to Canada just as a, as a lifestyle thing. Um, you want to live here? I wanted to live here. Uh, I have close friends here. Uh, when I was coming back, you know, for the summers, I was seeing how much energy there was in the city. Um, and that there was really something was going on here. And that was exciting to me. And I wasn't feeling that in Los Angeles. So uh, Cracked came right around that time and it was sent to me and they were having uh, trouble casting it. My manager uh, was like, I know you don't want to do a series. I know you don't want a series in Canada. I know you don't want a series in Canada for the CBC. And I said, well, what is it? And he described the show and I said, no, I want to do that. I mean, without reading it, I was, I could feel a big yes. And, Wait, uh, why did he know that you didn't want to do all those things? Well, I don't know did about you? the CVC, why he, he, but I think I, because I told him I wasn't interested in coming back to Canada. I wasn't right. interested in, in doing a series. Um, but I mean, you talk about your, we're not in control of our careers. It's exactly right. I mean, I, I, but there was a, just a big yes that happened for right. me. And um, it just, it all made sense. And I, you know, I don't know exactly why I'm here and, and what this is about, but uh on a, on a you know cosmic level and a, and a bigger level in terms of the, the trajectory of my life, but especially because right. we're complacent and don't shoot high enough. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you. Uh, I, I'm saying some in the television industry in Canada need to work harder and shoot higher. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll own that yeah. that judgment. No, that I, have I, all I, the way. I, I think it's actually great for Canadians to have that conversation. Yeah, I, I know on this program, we do want to make the best program in the world. That's yeah. what we're pushing for. But, Absolutely. But, 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 I, but I think, you know, the, it's, it's an important conversation to have about, you know, whether we do shoot for that and, and, and whether that's even healthy. Maybe it's, you know, uh, that kind of intensity that you talk about. Is um, it healthy? To shoot for the, you, I, I mean, mean it's you, wanna... it, you know, it's another. It maybe it's another side of the own the podium or yeah. or gold or nothing, right? Yeah. We just had the juniors lose, and, yeah. and and there were articles coming out saying, well, we shouldn't have been expecting them to win the gold yeah. you know, in hockey. So, I mean, it, uh, th- these are questions that yeah, we they're, ask they're of ourselves, and questions. it's never it's less of a question in the states, isn't it? It's always well, we want to be number one. We don't, we don't, we don't question that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I grew up, my mother's American. So I grew up with that kind of attitude. You know, she definitely had the, the, the American attitude. So, um, that's, that's part of who I am. Um, but I, I really believe that the next breaking bad can come out of Canada. Um, and particularly where the television industry is changing, meaning, uh, Netflix and, and iTunes shows are worldwide, right. you know, so they can sure, certainly something can air in Canada, but it can be seen all over the world. So there's no reason that can't happen. And I do think it's going to happen here. I, I feel the intention in the industry. The talent is here for sure. It's good to have you back. Yeah. It's good to be back. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks, man. <laughs>